Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello and welcome to an Inkdependence.com brief video review and water drop test. Today we have this ink from Franklin Kristoff. So first up, full disclosures, my wife Audrey works for Franklin Kristoff and uh, she gave me this ink to put up on the blog. This is a special limited edition ink. It comes in this bottle, which is a smaller than average bottle. This is the Philly Pin Show limited edition ink for 2017. And it's just called Ink 17. And as you can see from this little circular guy here and some of this, it's an orange ink. Now it's not quite that orange, right? That's, uh, that's not really a uh, good representation, but this is a very cool ink, I think. I love orange inks, as you know. You can see the color of orange from there. And to me, this looks like a, I don't know, like a very dark pumpkin-y sort of ink, or maybe like a fall leaves sort of ink. So having it here in the, the midst of winter, I mean, last year the Philly Pin Show was almost blizzarded out, right? So uh, the midst of winter is a good time to have a fun orange ink. So cool ink, it's orange, it's called Ink 17, and uh, that's that. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this guy up close. Yeah, I'll just zoom in instead of pulling that up. All right, so there you go. Um, this is, as you can see, a shading ink. You see plenty of shading here in the review. Uh, I had this in two pens. Firstly, I had it in this pen. I've had it in here for a little while, actually about as long as I've had it, which is, uh, I don't know, about a week, I guess. I put it in on the 6th. Yeah, so I don't know, a bit over a week or so. So uh, that's that. Um, this is the Wall Ever Sharp Skyliner. This is a pin that I got at a pin show a while ago, one of the very first of this new version of Wall Ever Sharps, and I like it quite a lot. It is a semi flex nib, and so it is. Uh, it doesn't have a nib size. It's somewhere around like a <coughs> goodness, hmm. somewhere around like a medium, I guess. But uh, it's a flexi nib, or at least semi flexi. Do a little bit of a push there, you can see it do it. Um, and it's uh, pretty wet. So I use this when I want to see what uh, what all is in an ink, you know, because it gives you like the darkest, deepest possible version of that ink usually, uh, but promotes a lot of uh, shading and that kind of stuff too. So there you go, that's the Wall Ever Sharp. And then I also had it in this pen, which is a Twisby Vac Mini. Uh, of all the Twisbees I have, and I have several, the Vac Mini is probably my favorite, although I really do like the Eco as well. So. Uh, this is a great little pen. If you haven't tried one of these, definitely do try it out. This is the medium nib. Uh, I didn't put this ink in anything really fine. I just don't have very many fine nibs sitting around right now. Uh, I just cleaned a bunch of pens, but anyway, whatever. We're gonna do it in a medium, and a medium that's super wet. So that's what we're gonna do with this one. Um, you can see it sort of sloshing around the barrel. It looks very nice. You can definitely tell it's an orange and not a red, although on paper from this uh, big wall ever sharp nib, let me zoom in just a little bit more, it does it is really wet, so you get like a rusty sort of color, as I note there. And, uh, <laughs> ugh, whoops, I was going, oh, I didn't say which nib this was, and then I put my hand on it before it was dry. It doesn't have a particularly long dry time, but this is, of course, Rhodia paper, and Rhodia paper does take forever to dry with just about everything, so there you go. Uh, however, if you use it in the, uh, you know, smaller, drier nib from the Twisby, uh, it's much more of an orange, right? It's much more... I don't know, sort of normally orange, but not like a bright orange. So it's not in the same uh, category as my favorite oranges, which are like um, uh, uh, bleh, uh, Ackerman's Orange Boven or uh, Sailor's Kinmokusai, which is kind of that apricot orange color. Uh, it's going to be a definitely a different kind of orange. As you can see here, they're both put together. It's pretty close to Montverde uh, Mandarin Orange, but not really. Uh, it's not a red at all, although it's closer to this red when you put it in this, um, you know, this big fat nib. So, uh, you know, it's definitely an orange. It's sort of an orange that's a, uh, I don't know, kind of a rusty, like, fall leaves sort of orange. Anyway, very cool. So, let's get to the water test here. Uh, I should mention that they're really only selling this nib, this nib. Ooh, they're only really selling this ink at uh, the Philly Pen Show, which is coming up this next weekend. By the time I'm posting this, it'll probably be like that day. So hey, come out to the Philly Pin Show if you're in the Philly area. Also, you should just come out to the Philly Pin Show if you're in the Philly area anyway, because, uh, I mean, pin shows are awesome. And if you watch this, then you probably want to go to a pin show, and you're probably the kind of person who would think it was awesome. So I'm not lying. All right, you see some of it swirling away there. I don't, don't really know what kind of water resistance this guy's going to have. Um, so let's let it sit there for just a sec. Um, anyway, so come out to the Philly Pen Show, get yourself a bottle of this ink. I'm not sure what they're pricing it at. I want to say probably, 
I don't know, eight or ten bucks, something like that is probably where it's going to be. They didn't tell me. I didn't really ask. Audrey and I keep kind of a Chinese wall thing between the Franklin Kristoff business and my blog stuff just because I want to be able to review stuff. No, I don't want to know too many secrets. Secrets. All right, so there we go. And yeah, not particularly water resistant. You see a lot of really nice orange and yellow here. Uh, that's pretty cool. A little bit of, yeah, a little bit of other stuff. I don't really know what it is. It's hard to say. That's why I don't use paper towels for chromatography. I use other stuff for chromatography. So this is, uh, this is, here is the ink after you put some, uh, some water on it. Hold on, let me take a picture of that. Where's my phone? Oh no. Okay, so uh, there we go. Let's take a look at the chromatography for this ink. And there it is. So as you can see in the sort of moving sample there, uh, not really anything stays down here, like kind of a gray or what color is that? Grayish, brownish, bluish smudge down at the bottom where it started out. Not a whole lot there. And you can see up here, you've got like nice rich tones. So reds and oranges, a little bit of yellow in there, it looks like. Uh, a little bit of brown or burgundy or something right off the top. So there you go. All right. So that is the chromatography for ink 17. All right, uh, let's take a look at this on some papers. Uh, one place where this ink doesn't really shine is on copy paper. It's not great on copy paper, honestly. It's kind of, I mean, it's fine. It's not a bad, it's not bad by any, any means. I mean, if you look here, this is the wall ever sharp sample. And as I said, that is a very wet nib. I mean, this is like, this looks almost as dark as their, uh, the Franklin Christoph uh, Arushi Red, almost. It's more orange, of course, but it's so dark from that, uh, that nib. But you get a little bit of feathering here and there, just a little bit. Not too bad, really, especially not for being on copy paper and being a very wet, flexy nib. Well, uh, semi-flexy, anyway. Uh, the bottom sample here, of course, is from that Twisby on the same 20-pound Staples copy paper. This is the stuff you can expect to find in your local office uh, because it's the cheapest possible stuff. And uh, so it's not great, but in the back, you do get some bleed. Not a huge amount of bleed, actually. Way less than I got from the Noodler's Colorado Spruce, which is up here. And he's like, that just came through every word. Uh, this one, you really only get much bleed from the Wall Evershire. You get some little bits of bleed from that one, uh, but not too bad. Uh, it's about the same, eh, yeah, it's about the same as you get maybe from this uh, uh, Mont Blanc uh, Miles Davis. And that is a very, very pale ink. You can barely see yeah, Look at how, how light that is. So, you know, not bad. Not bad, but not perfect. So we'll say that. Uh, here it is on, uh, this is a currently inked journal from uh, uh, Pen Habit. This is, I think, one of that wheat straw paper. And there you go, you can see that there. You get a lot of the red tones and such. This is, of course, the Charlotte, the Skyliner. And then over here, you get the more orange tones from the Vac Mini. So there you go. Uh, I haven't had it in this one for very long, just a couple of days. And, uh, you know, because I've only had this ink for a little bit. So that's the thing. It was a bit of a surprise to me. She brought it home. She's like, hey, Review this. And I said, okay, I'll do that. Here it is mixed with some other inks. This is uh, Tomoe River on an ink journal paper. Uh, I didn't use Franklin Christoph paper, which you might think is odd since we're reviewing a thing for Franklin Christoph uh, by Franklin Christoph, but their paper is not quite white. And so I don't like to do reviews on it. I think it's great for writing. It's, you know, performs well, but it's not perfect for reviews because it's got like a not quite white color and I want white. So uh, let me take this off and back. There we go. This is little guidelines. So when you get this, it's blank. And then you get this guideline, you put it underneath. So anyway, um, so this is the ink. You see a lot more orange here on the Tomoe River. I mean, look at this. It's like, I don't know. It's like, uh, like slightly darker than Habanero on Tomoe River, which is interesting because it's much darker than Habanero otherwise. So uh, that's Noodler's Habanero I'm speaking of. Uh, way darker than like Apache Sunset and those kind of things. More rusty colored than my orange bovins that are my favorites and that sort of jazz. But uh, nonetheless, very cool fallish sort of orange. Let's put that back in there. Put this out of the way. What else do we have? No, that's kind of it. All right, cool. So this has been uh, Franklin Kristoff's Ink 17. Come and get it in this cool little bottle. Uh, it looks like it's about half the size of their regular bottles. Here's the regular bottle. Ugh. Sorry, I had to reach very far. So yeah, there you go. I think it's probably a, a one ounce bottle instead of a two ounce bottle, although I don't think it actually says on the bottle. That's, I think, what's going on there. So it's about that. So, uh, you know, still a good price for this sort of thing, uh, depending on what the price of that, but I think it's probably going to be um, eight or ten bucks. So there you go. Come and find this at the Philly Pin Show. Come and find me at the Philly Pin Show. I'll be around. Uh, a bunch of my favorite vendors are going to be there. A lot of people I know from the Pin Addict Slack channel are going to be there. Uh, I'm pretty psyched about that. I hear the Philly Pin Show is very cool. I've actually never been to Philadelphia. Maybe I'll try to find like 
historical stuff or something while I'm not doing pin show stuff? I'm not doing pin show stuff. When's that gonna be? All right, so that's it. Uh, so I'm Mike. This is Ink Dependence. This has been Franklin Christoph's Ink Number uh, Ink 17 for the Philly Pin Show. Get yourself to the Philly Pin Show. Get those sweet, sweet Pin Show exclusives. Uh, and I will see you there. Come up and say hi if you uh, recognize me or hear my voice or something, because some people actually hear my voice from this. And they're like, hey, I know that voice. So if that's you, come say hi. That would be awesome. I love that stuff. All right. So if you, uh, here's the little end card thing that uh, YouTube's doing now. So if you want to uh, see more videos from me, well, YouTube's going to pick one. It'll put it in that box on the right hand side over here ish. If you want to uh, contribute to my Patreon, which will be right here, you know, poke that button, contribute to my Patreon. That would be amazing. It gives me more money to spend at pen shows and on cameras and all kinds of fun stuff. And if you want to see the last video I did, it'll be right here-ish. So, there you go. That's it. Peace out.